G'day fixers. Well, after the silliness of all that pallet shenanigans the other few weeks, I'm back on a real job again. I am here at North Sydney, just north of the harbour, and uh, I'm at a strata complex to do some restoration, not on this furniture, but on some outdoor garden furniture, which the $1,000 pallet actually did have some purpose other than being a gag video. So here is the pallet deconstructed, complete with my lovely placed holes where they're going to get trimmed off the end. So this is actually Burmese teak. I really did buy the teak. It is really for a job. And these are some of the shorter sections. Let's go for a walk and see what we're dealing with. And here is the furniture in question. So these are rather expensive full solid teak benches. And it has been raining, which is going to make sanding difficult. But I've got six of them scattered around the place, four here, two elsewhere. And look, they're not too bad, really. Is this one of the better ones? So you'll see here plugs up. Most of those are going to come off and have to be recut. Here you can see we've got some damage to the backers. And fortunately, I've measured that up well because those are the pieces which are going to slot in there. So they're probably going to have to be pocket holed back in from the rear. And you see, there's quite a few of them that are buggered. So that's what we're going to do. And while this one looks okay, on a number of them, the long sections have got some weakness in them too. So we're going to have to deal with that as well. So follow along. It's uh, autumn here, just autumn in Australia. And it's my ginger little skin being scared of the sun. So we'll be covered on up. And the last thing we have to show you is this guy. So you've probably noticed these on a number of people's channels recently. EcoFlow have been doing the YouTube advertising rounds. And as such, they have sent me one to try out because it should be perfect in this situation. This is gonna be the main culprit that I have to use, but uh, that thing does suck quite a bit of power and I'm hoping with its 240 volt output that the EcoFlow is gonna help me out because while I've got access to hoses and they're really long, I don't have access to power out there. And I don't wanna move those heavy benches too far if I can avoid it. So having a portable power supply that I can hook up the power tools to is great. And also, you know, just charging the Makita, charging my phone. That's gonna be the game changer. If it can power these sorts of tools, like the paint sprayer, like the Kasha, away from a power point, God, that just makes it so much bloody easier. Now, she's a bit wet today, which is gonna be mildly annoying, but is also kind of useful because this is my new Teak. It is incredibly oily. And the rain is actually gonna help me with my first step. I like this stuff. It's the Cabot's Deck Prep System. Uh, so this is new timber prep. I've got a whole video on how to use this stuff, so I won't be going into too much detail. But effectively, you need damp wood. This is gonna spend 25 years outside, so a little bit of rain now is perfectly fine. And what you do is slather on the new timber prep, as I'll do shortly. Leave that sit, soak in. It removes that very surface layer of tannin and oil, and that is going to make, when I do put the finish on here, it soak in a lot better. And then the deck clean is to clean it off difficult to see on the stone but this is what the new timber prep is doing that there is the oil and tannin off the outer surface coming out of the wood now you don't want to hit teak too hard because the whole point of teak is that it's a very very oily wood but just a little bit of a clean does wonders right so next step we'll be getting the deck clean and it's a four to one mix so luckily i've got markings on the inside of my buckets and we're going to use this both on the new timber prep to wash off the tannin and the new timber prep, and then we'll use the rest of it to give a jolly good scrub, old manual-like, to all of the furniture, and then we'll hose it off. So I'm gonna be fighting this all day and hope that my uh, rain protection tarp up here does hold. For the moment it's okay, because the rain actually sort of helps the washing process, if anything else, but I'm not gonna be able to do any sanding, which is the next step, to strip back the old benches. Oh my goodness, it's bucketing down now. Hate working outdoors, but these things are too big to move to the workshop. So I should have quoted more for this part. That one had flathead screws, eight of them in each bloody side. This one has M8 bolts in it, so at least it's a little bit easier. I can't get the impact driver in and I forgot my bits anyway. So we are doing it manually and it's a pain in the bum because I've got to dig out and bloody excavate these things first. Oh, hopefully it'll come out. These are not light. 
All right, that bastard's out. Uh, that's one of six that I have to do. And the next step is to get the deck clean on there and give him a bit of a scrub. Okie dokie, we're going to do this in stages. And I've got the Kasha, which is a Kasha 2.1. I'll have to check what the wattage draw on it is. This thing will go up to 1800, or so it claims. It is currently sitting at 100%. I charged it and it took one hour to go from 50% up to 100% last night, plugged into mains. And obviously there's no draw on there yet, but we will take a look at how she goes once I turn this thing on. Works. So it's doing well. I think my poor little pressure washer might be dying. It's about 10 years old though, so um, there'll be a little bit of oil leaking out of him, and that's not great. Might need a new one of those soon. And then of course I noticed that just over here, I've actually got a power point. But bugger it, uh, we're here to test the EcoFlow, and test the EcoFlow we will. We'll see how it holds up over the day, powering this guy with six benches to clean up. So we are two benches down and we're at 85 percent so i should easily be able to get the other four benches pressure washed without a, another charge look it is quite heavy which is due to all the batteries but it is a one hand lift you can sort of pick it up and pull it around here are the other four benches lovely little area here oh my god every single one of these legs has had four epping fisher shot flathead screws in them and I've done four of the six benches with that bloody thing and it's taking forever. They're brass, they're snapping. And then a friendly tradie in the building gave me one of those when I asked nicely. Thank Christ for that. Because now, instead of spending three or four minutes per bloody screw, oh yeah. That, that's, that's so much better. Bloody hell. So that is the end of day one, and they're all clean. The wood's all prepped. I can't do anything else anyway, but it's also four o'clock, time to go home, until these dry out. So hopefully tomorrow we get a warm day, and it will look like I can sand stuff. I really, really do not like this film coat or whatever they put on top. I'm a bit worried it's going to look uneven because I'm only going to use an oil over the top of these. But I hope it comes out okay. We'll have to test a small bit because if the oil isn't going to look good, I'm going to have to go buy this same film coat again, which luckily is a Bunnings product, and um, do that. I really don't like it. But if it's going to look crap with oil over the top, without sanding every single last inch of it, then I'm going to have to do that. The EcoFlow, did I actually need it? Um, no, I probably could have run without it today, but it does mean I would have been running a large extension cable. Let's take a look, how did we go? We are at 42%, so 60%, 10% per bench. So that is um, definitely really, really convenient, I suppose, like anything convenient, I think that's part of what you're paying for. Anyway, I'm going to pack up today and just move these off to the side and then we come back in a day or two when things are nice and dry and we will continue the restoration. Okie dokie, day two and blue skies, which I am much happy about because today is sanding and repairing and finishing day. So this is where we left things yesterday. The pressure washing has dried quite nicely. That's the tool of the trade for today. And... Now you can see what we're left to work with. Most of them are in pretty good condition. There's only, you know, about a dozen pieces of timber maybe that need replacing. But I've managed to get myself teak stain. Unfortunately, I was going to put oil on these things. But as you can see, even after sanding, that color's going to be primarily still there. So we have to now put teak colored stain over teak. So before sanding, however, I am going to have to do some deconstruction. A few bits need to go. A couple of those are loose, a couple of these are loose and split at the end, so that's why I've got the new teak. I'm going to have to do something about 
the old screws in here and all of these old raised plugs have to come out as well. Yeah, they're all screwed in under there. I'm not going to be taking up any of the battens that are in good condition, but I am going to be re-plugging them. Probably a bit dark back here, but you can also see there have been some repairs done. Some of them are okay. This one here is a pocket hole repair from a couple of years ago, obviously. A little bit rusted, but that's you know, that's fine. This one though, that's that's got to go. That's just completely shattered itself, and it looks like there might even be some uh, resonant bugs living in here too. So there's the sort of stuff that I'm dealing with. Okie dokie, so they're all prepped now for repairs and sanding. I have nine long pieces and nine short pieces from my buy, and I think I am missing six. I've got two more benches down the other end. Six long ones need to be replaced, and maybe a seventh, so that's pretty good. And the short ones, I think I've got five or six as well, so that's not too bad. The reason I had to guesstimate and overguesstimate a little bit was because there's about a two-week leading time to get the teak, so I couldn't do this first and then order the teak and then wait for it to come. So better have a little bit too much than not enough. I don't know about you, but uh, standing out there and sanding for a few hours, to me, certainly does not seem as fun as standing under here for a few hours and the sun should even give me more shade going forward. It's like five degrees cooler just by putting that tarp up. I don't know, sometimes I'm a freaking genius. So here is the first bench ready to be finished. This one was probably in the worst condition and I have replaced two of the slats down here. And we did that by very fortunately having to cut off these tiny 18 gauge brad holes. I have no idea how those 18 gauge brad holes got into the very end of those boards or how there was exactly enough left on either side for that to do. But circular saw and the Craig Crosscut very very quick work of trimming those down to size the only real tricky bit were two things firstly a lot of the time the old screw had metal in the middle so i have to put these new screws just the slightest ever so bit off to the side so that i'm not drilling them into the shank of the rusted old screw that came off and of course trying to screw them in under that handrail Long story short, I drilled these before I put them in with the lovely countersinky type bit and then I have to use a ratchet. These are self-cutting. I've already done a couple and even without a pilot hole in this bit, they seem to do okay. It is just mildly tedious using this thing because the impact driver won't be able to be under that rail until it's almost sunk all the way. So I'll need to cut some plugs. I'm actually thinking I'm going to bring my drill press tomorrow. There will be a tomorrow, day three. But I'm going to try and get all these repairs done. And then tomorrow come and do the finishing and the reinstallation. End of day two and I did manage to kill the battery finally. It is just over an hour charge time when you are on AC. That's a 21%. It's only been going for about 10 minutes or so. That's while charging that battery too. Yeah, that's, that's bloody impressive. So I was using this little guy yesterday and it was the only thing that I brought along with me. And look, it worked, but it was slow, it was annoying, and I've got the big boy, so why not use it? I'm putting really long screws into really thin stock, so having different options for selling the collar height and the depth here, just much, much better. Cracking on. Did I mention faster? Line up the middle, down. My drill's busy, so the impact driver will do. Super quick, super easy, and with the two inch blue coat screws, super bloody strong.
If I haven't mentioned it already, the reason I'm not using the two screws like you should is because that's where the dowels were and the timber underneath it is rotted completely. So, I'm having to rely on oversized screws and trying to hit the good wood in the middle. I've been very careful with the length of these to make sure that they are a super snug fit. So I want that pressure. And to make sure they're positioned correctly, space a block. A bit tricky with only the one screw, but they have been holding. And what a bloody screw, look at the size of that thing. So I've got the meat down here, I've got to be careful I don't come out the front. So I've actually set the collar depth on the drill a little bit shallower than I normally would, so we don't have any disasters. And we come around back here and drive it as usual. Clutch relatively low, I've only got this on six at the moment. That didn't blow out the front, so happy days. Now, even though it's only got the one screw at top and bottom, I've got no rotation. It's a nice fit. And the last thing we're going to do is get some water barrier and we'll cap off these screws. These screws shouldn't rust too much, but it'll just help get a really nice seal on there. Right, so next up, I need plugs. Lots of little plugs to fill the holes in the seat to help keep the water out. Then I need a plug cutter. I can't use that in a drill, so I need a drill press. And luckily mine is small enough to take on site. Eco flow to power it, happy days. So when you're using these plug cutters, you'll notice that that end is slightly tapered. So make sure you do drill all the way down to the maximum depth of the plug cutter. And that'll give you this lovely bullet shape, which will make them fit snugly into the holes. I have found though, with some of the old holes that I'm plugging, so that's a nice clean hole, and it's gonna fit beautifully. The taper will help it just jam on in there. But with some of these degraded old holes here, the good thing is you can turn it around the other way so that the thicker end is at the bottom and that makes it fit better. Fun times. Plugging, 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 plugging. So much plugging. Look, these aren't gonna last forever, but they're better than nothing. At least I've got galvanized screws. These other ones are already buggered. I love this little saw. It's so handy. Bloody hot today, about 35 degrees. Hiding behind the shed. Quality tap water. And um, I don't have a cup. So, paint tray. Helps on point now, don't it? Gotta say, hydro. Trady life. So it's finally time to get the first coat of stain on. I've moved into the lovely shade. This is the product we're using. It's a Bunnings. It's actually not cheap. It looks like it's something cheap, but it's not. That's a very expensive tin. Four litres of teak coloured outdoor stain, which is supposedly what is already on here. So here's a little bit of before action. Let's slap it on, see how long it takes. Six benches, two coats. You get the picture. Alrighty, let's see what she looks like. That should look pretty nice on the new teak. Let's try the old stuff. Alright, now it's super hot today and I need to keep a wet edge with this supposedly. So I'm not going to film too much. We'll come back when she's done. So that's one coat down and it's taking me about 20-25 minutes per bench. I didn't want to bring my sprayer, um, spraying outside here, I was a bit worried about overspray and the wind is never a good thing as well, but I suppose with a brush you have to do what's called a practical restoration. 
Um, it's not perfect, and let's not look at the underside, but the areas where the sun and rain are going to hit have been coated and they'll get a second coat soon too. So I think that's about the limits of my patience. It's one of those diminishing return things. It's trying to get the edges of the slats. I've got the main slats, the verticals and the horizontals. I got most of the edges of those, but I'm not crawling underneath the bench to, to do the rest of it. It's just one of those things you, you got to draw a line somewhere. And I think a practical restoration. The, the goal is not to make them perfect. The goal is to make them last 10 more years. And as long as I come back in a year or two and put on another coat, then they will continue to look this good. And I'm pretty happy with them. Because I hate myself, I stayed back until 6 o'clock tonight and finished the first coat on all six benches. And made a mess. Here's another one where we've got a combination of new wood and old wood. Mostly in the texture, because the old stuff was so pitted. But honestly, to an untrained eye and at first glance, they look pretty good. I am knackered. My shoulder hurts, my back hurts, my knees hurt. Tomorrow, come back, quick second coat, and then reinstall them on their pylons. Happy days, tired days. Look at this beautiful silhouette action for day four of the build. First coats yesterday took me about 25 minutes to 30 minutes to get them on. This morning I've done two of them already and it's only about 10-15 for the second coats luckily. Then we can bolt them on and thank Christ we're done and I'll be on a holiday. Let's finish up. And that's done. They look pretty good. I'm glad I got four litres so these six benches have taken at least three, three and a bit litres of the stuff. Obviously the first coat soaked in heaps. All that's left now is to bolt them down and pack up and we're done. Thank Christ. I am getting old and my back is really sore. And I am out of breath again because it is very hot today. But we are finally done. All six benches restored. They look all right, if I do say so myself. So this one here has got, I can see some of the replacement back slats. And I think this is a really bad one, does it? Yes, it does. It also has some of the replacement bottom slats too. So the two front ones there, you can see they're just that slightly different color. But you know, given time, and look, I think the change of finish was a good call. Um, don't really like putting stain over expensive wood, but it blends them in really nicely. And, you know, I can see the pick the new ones there, but, you know, casual observer should be fine. Beautiful set of units, hot weather, hard work, and I feel good. I just hope they're going to take my slight variance on my invoice because I've been here for three and a half days instead of the original two, and that was my fault. You know, this is a part-time gig for me. Estimation, not my strong sort. Uh, the EcoFlow, the sort of sponsor of this video. So, of course, EcoFlow did supply me with this unit, and I'm going to change my opinion slightly. It was really, really good, and I know you know, I've been given a $2,500 unit, and I expect to say it's good, but my initial advice and my still advice on it is that it's very expensive, of course. You know, it's worth more than my bloody table saw is. So I was really questioning whether it would be worth to buy. And my answer is that most of the time you don't need. I did actually have power that I could have run a really long extension cord to, and to save yourself the money, that could be done. Having said that, if I was doing this sort of trade work every day, that will pay for itself so quickly it is ridiculous just in messing around in time. I had it on the drill press, I had it recharging batteries, I had it on the pressure washer, and just not having to run a cable was freaking awesome, and I was so happy to have that and just be able to pick it up, move it around, and just do whatever I want with it. Because it's not the first thing you want to buy, but do consider them if you are an outside kind of person who needs access to portable power. Well, guys and girls, thank you for attending this vlog slash furniture restoration. Um, I do like sharing my paid work. Obviously, the style of video is a bit different to my normal edited video because I'm filming on a phone and I'm out and about and just doing bits and pieces. But you might have picked up something valuable. Uh, it's my first time restoring this large amount of furniture. I've repaired furniture before. I've stained furniture before. But just three and a half days of constant hard yakka 
has definitely pushed me and I'm glad I'm getting paid for it. So uh, yeah, be cautious accepting a job this large. I don't know if I would again in a hurry because the money's good, but the, uh, the stress on the old body is pretty tough. The benches have come out fantastic. Uh, I, I like the way that I've repaired them. I like the fact that we went to the effort of doing it properly and the client seems to be very happy with them. And I've already had a couple of people walk up to me just working here. As I said before in my How I Make Money uh, video, doing jobs like this, I got it through my website. Uh, just like my other very large job and this is this is a multi thousand dollar uh, job that i'm doing here and on top of that i've now had two separate residents of this building that i am working at come up and go hey can i send you some photos of something that's broken in my place to come and look at and i'll probably get some more work out of it too so if you are trying to do this as a bit of a side hustle then just get yourself out there get your website up and you know look at the opportunities that come your way and you know, be careful quoting. <laughs> you don't want to undercut yourself like I have here a little bit. But uh, yeah, you, the work will flow on. And if I was trying to make a business of this, I'd be pointed in the right direction. But I'm not giving up the day job anytime soon. This is James with Fix of Fingers. I hope you enjoyed this ramble and I'll catch you on the next one.